How are you? Hope you are doing great. So welcome for today's AFR session. And today I want us to cover, uh, we cover I, IAS 12, that's income taxes. And what are the income taxes? Now IAS 12, eh, Spirit for Accounting for Income Taxes and Income Taxes, they are just taxes based on the taxable profit. And we have the difference between taxable profit and accounting profit. What's the difference between the two? Now, the taxable profit is the profit for the period determined using revenue authority assumptions. That's why you have allowable, disallowable, taxable, non-taxable. That's how we get the taxable profit. Then we have accounting profit. Now, accounting profit is the profit determined for the period eh, using the accounting assumptions and principles. And that's what I have indicated there. The difference between the taxable profit and accounting profit. Taxable profit will be derived or determined using the revenue authority assumption, but accounting profit will be determined using accounting assumption and principles. Then we have what we call deferred tax. What's a deferred tax? Deferred. When you talk about deferred, something has been pushed uh, forward. Eh? So deferred tax is the tax which is payable in the future and which arises as a result of what we call temporary differences. Yeah, that's what we call deferred tax. Eh? That ta deferred tax is a tax payable in the future which arises as a result of temporary differences. What are temporary differences? Now, temporary differences is the difference between the carrying amount and the tax base of an item. The difference between the carrying amount. When you talk about the carrying amount, eh, we are talking about the net book value. Or the amount in which an item has been presented in the financial statement. That's what you call the carrying amount. And the tax base. Now, what is tax base? What is tax base? So, tax base is the amount attributable for tax purposes, which is allowable for tax in the future. Now, I want you to get this definition. Eh? Tax base, in short, is the amount allowable for tax in the future. Just get that. Eh? That, uh, that tax base is the amount which will be allowable for tax in the future. Good. So, and we have said that deferred tax will arise, uh, will arise as a result of term and temporary differences. Now, of the temporary differences, we have two types of temporary differences. We have two types of temporary differences. We have them here. One is what we call the taxable temporary difference, and then we have deductible temporary difference. What's the difference? Taxable temporary difference gives rise to deferred tax liability. That's what we call taxable temporary difference. It gives rise to deferred tax liability. Then we have deductible temporary difference. A deductible temporary difference is a temporary difference which will give rise to what we call deferred tax asset. Deferred tax asset. So now I want you to understand that uh, what's a temporary difference. Eh? So I want to give you this illustration here. Now assuming, assuming you have an asset and this asset is worth 100 million. That's the cost. Then during the accounting period, there was a depreciation of this asset of 20 million. Of 20 million. Then, then there was wear and tear. Wear and tear on this asset. Assume it was 30. Yeah, assume it was 30. So how do we get the temporary difference in this case? Now, we are saying that temporary difference is the difference between the carrying amount and the tax base. Carrying amount and the tax base. And the carrying amount, we are saying this is the same as net book value. And carrying amount is surely determined by the accountant. You as the accountant, you are the one who will determine the carrying amount. Tax base, we have seen that it's the amount allowable for tax, uh, for the tax purposes, allowable for tax in the future. And tax base, when you see tax base, eh, what comes to your mind, this is the revenue authority. This is a KRI guy. This is the taxman, this is the accountant. And for the taxman, the tax base is always determined at the original cost or the amount which is amortized. Eh? So this is what I mean. I want to get the, uh, the temporary difference. The asset had cost 100 million. The deposition was 20 million. You as an accountant, how much would be the carrying amount of the net book value? The net book value will be 100 minus depreciation, which is 20. So to your financial statement, you record an amount of 80. That's the carrying amount. 
Now let's go to the revenue authority. We are saying that the revenue authority of the KRA, the amount allowable for tax purposes, this is all they'll do. The cost of the asset was 100. Remember for revenue authority, depreciation is a disallowable expense, but they only allow for wear and tear. And in this case, the wear and tear was how much? It was 30. So that means in this case, you'll get 70. So the tax base is 70. As an accountant, you show 80. That's the current amount. But for the uh, revenue authority of the taxman, we'll show an amount of 70. So now the difference between the two, 80 minus 70, you get 10. Now this 10 is what we call temporary difference. And when it's positive, this one is called, it's a taxable. This is what we call a taxable temporary difference. If it was a negative, it's deductible temporary differences. That's why I say that we have two types of temporary differences. Good. Let's come here. There are some NBs I have indicated there. NB. NB number one. NB number one is that increase in deferred tax liability is an expense where a decrease is an income. An increase in liability or deferred tax liability becomes an expense while a decrease in that liability will become an income. You need to note that. And also that revaluation changes for PPE and available for sale are subjected to special deferred tax treatment. In short, non-current assets, tangible non-current assets. Eh? That's why in this case I've specified for PPE, that's plant property and equipment and available for sale. Remember available for sale, they are long-term financial assets. Eh? So the two of them, they are subjected to a special deferred tax treatment. And then NB number three is that tax expense comprise of two elements. The tax expense will comprise two elements, and one element is the current tax and the changes in deferred tax. Remember, current tax is the tax based on the profit, uh, profit for the period. And then deferred tax, remember we have said that. An increase in deferred tax becomes an expense. If the deferred tax was an increase, eh, so it becomes an expense, you add it. If it was a decrease, we had a decrease of deferred tax, it becomes an income. So you deduct it. That means it will reduce your amount of tax which is payable. So is the current tax based on 30 percent but deferred tax you look at the changes either increase if it's an increase you add if it's a decrease you deduct and then you get that eh? good now what are the some of the advantages of recognizing deferred tax most of the organization most small organizations, they don't uh, does that they does not recognize deferred tax but it's a requirement that you need to recognize this deferred tax yeah because most of the organization only recognize that but for the big company, also, they usually uh, do recognize deferred tax. What are the advantages of recognizing deferred tax? One advantage is that if deferred tax is ignored, that means the profit will be inflated. Assuming now you are supposed to pay a deferred tax of 5 million. Assuming you are supposed to pay that. Eh? And then you decide to ignore that 5 million. That means your profit will be inflated by 5 million. Another advantage is that the accrual concept of accounting requires that profits to be matched with their tax expenses. So that one is a requirement of one of the accounting principles. That's the accounting concept, eh? that the profit to be matched with the expenses. So these profits need to be matched with their tax expense. And then number three, deferred tax will eventually become actual tax. If you does not, if you didn't, uh, you does not uh, recognize deferred tax. One time in the future, when this deferred tax will arise to be actual tax, you will be required to pay a huge or lump sum amount. So it's better to be providing a provision, be paying in small proportion. And lastly, ignoring deferred tax leads to overstatement of tax. Leading, if you ignore deferred tax, for example, assuming you are supposed to pay 5 million, and in this case, you ignore that 5 million, that means your profit will be overstated. And if you overstate your profit, that means, number one, there will be distortion of EPS. Remember, EPS will be determined based on the profit you earned. If your profit is inflated, that also means that your EPS is also inflated. And remember, investors usually make their decision based on the earnings per share. So that means if the distortion, uh, if the EPS has been dist uh, distorted, eh? number three, that means it will lead to misleading of share shareholders. So number one, distortion of EPS will also lead to misleading shareholders and also overpayment of dividend. Remember, the more tax you report, and assuming you are supposed to pay 5%, 5% of 5 million, you distribute them as dividend. You pay them to the shareholder. You are deceiving them that you are making profit. 
But on the other hand, other, other sign, it's only that you are not providing for deferred tax. So those are the, some of the advantages of recognizing deferred tax so that you can avoid all of that. Good. So now I want us to look at something else. Methods of determining income taxes. What are some of the methods of determining income taxes? Method or what you call nil provision. Method or what you call flow through method. Number two, we have what we call deferred tax method. Deferred tax accounting method or liability method. Now, what's the difference between the two? The first one, the tax payable or the nil provision of the flow through method. This method, it's nil provision. That means it only recognizes, only recognizes current tax, thereby ignoring, thereby ignoring deferred tax. Ignoring and deferred tax. That's the tax payable or the nil provision. It will only recognize the current tax. In this case, it does not recognize deferred tax. IAS 12 does not recommend the use of this method. That's the nil provision. Then number two, we have the deferred tax accounting method. And a deferred tax accounting method, it recognizes both. It recognizes both the current tax, current tax and deferred tax. And this is the recommended method. Eh? In this case, we'll be recognizing both the current tax and the deferred tax. That means your tax expense, that means our tax expense will comprise both the element, one being the current tax and the changes in deferred, deferred tax, like that. And you have said that if, a deferred tax, if there was an increase in deferred tax, eh, it becomes an expense. But if it was a decrease, it becomes an income you deduct. Good. And under that, how do we compute this deferred tax element? So, methods of determining deferred tax element. Number one, we have what we call the full provision method. Full provision method. And then we have partial provision method. Yeah, those are the two methods which can be used to determine the tax element of the deferred tax element when determining the tax expense. And one is the full provision method. Now, under full provision method, it recognizes all the temporary differences arising from all the transactions. So in this case, under full provision, you recognize all the temporary differences arising from all the transaction. But partial provision method, as the word says, it's partial. It will only recognize temporary difference for the transaction, which are reasonable and are expected to reverse in the future. And those transactions, the temporary difference, which are expected to reverse in the future which are reasonable and are expected to reverse in the future. Eh? But for full provision method, it will recognize both are all temporary difference for all the transactions. It does not uh, look at the which are deductible, which are taxable. But in this case, only the ones which are reasonable, which are making sense, eh? and which one are the ones which are expected to reverse in the future. So those are the two methods which are used to determine the tax element or define tax element when computing the tax expense. Good. Now with that, I want us to do an illustration from the past paper. We do an illustration from the past paper. Open this question. May 2017, question 4B. May 2017, question 4B. You are told that. Moruna Limited is a manufacturing company 
A manufacturing company provides for deferred income tax in accordance with IES 12 income taxes. The following is an extract uh, from the statement of financial position as at 30th April 2017. So you are given the statement of financial position there. Now, the item given there, the, both the asset and the liability, that is what we call the carrying amount. And we say the carrying amount is the amount which is presented in the statement of financial position. Then, if you want to determine, let's go to the required. Required, required, number one. Deferred tax balance as of 30th April 2017, that's at the end of the period. And number two, deferred income tax account as of 30th April 2017. Now, first of all, to, uh, to determine the deferred tax, this is what you'll do. You get your item, then you compare your carrying amount, your carrying amount against the tax base. The difference between the two, that's what we call temporary difference. Temporary difference. And you have said that carrying amount, this one will be determined by the accountant. And it's the same as net book value. Tax base, this one will be determined by the taxman. So this is the KRA. And most is based on the original cost. So now let's go to additional information number one. Additional information number one. Number one, you are told that the tax basis of the assets were as follows. The tax basis of the assets. So we are given the, uh, you are given the assets. We had PPE. PPE, also we have prepayment. Uh, then we have interest bearing, uh, interest bearing loans. So we have interest bearing loans. And then we have financial asset available for sale. Financial asset available for sale. Those are the items given. And then you are given their tax basis. For the PPE is 2800. Uh, prepayment is 1500. Uh, interest bearing borrowings. It's 17,000 and available for sale, it's 14,000. Now, let's get the occurring amount. How do you get the occurring amount? Just go to the statement. We say that the item presented in the statement of financial position, that's the occurring amount. The first one was PPE. How much is the PPE? PPE in our statement of financial position is 14,000. Then we have prepayment. Prepayment is part of current assets. So let's go to the current assets, to the current assets, prepayment, it's an amount of that too. Then we have interest bearing loans. Loans is part of non-current liability. Let's go to non-current liabilities. The non-current liability is 16,000. And then we have available for sale. Available for sale is part of non-current assets. The non-current asset, we have financial asset available for sale, which is 12,000. Just record that. Eh? And before I forget, loan is part of liability. For the liability, you show them like that, eh? as a negative. For the liability, you show them as a negative. So now, let's get the temporary difference. To get the temporary difference, you take the carrying amount, you deduct the tax base. So for example, here you'll take 14,000, you minus 12,800, and you'll have, that's 11,200, which is positive. That 200 minus 1,500, you'll get 1,700. Negative 16,000 minus negative 17,000, you get a positive of 1,000. 12,000 minus 14,000, you get negative 2,000. Like that. So, the one we have as positive, that's what we call the taxable temporary difference. And for the negative, is what we call deductible temporary difference. Good. Let's go to additional information number two. How much is the inventory from the trial balance or from the balance sheet? From the balance sheet, inventory is part of current assets. It's an amount of 7,500. That's what you are given as the current amount. Eh? Let's go back to note number two. Inventories are stated at fair value, less cost to sell, which is lower than the original cost. Due to the general provision for price decline of 3,500. So can you be able to determine the tax base? So this is the carrying amount given in the statement of financial position. And we are told that this amount, let me read again. Inventory are stated at fair value, less cost to sell, which is lower than the original cost. This is lower than the original cost. So 
our motive to determine the original cost. That's our tax base, eh? which was okay, which is lower than the original cost due to general provision for price decline of that 500 of that 500. So what do you do to get the tax base? This is lower due to price decline of that 500. To get the original cost, how much was it? You just take 7,500, you add back that 500. And in that case, how much do you get? You'll get 11,000. What do we mean? That means the original cost was 11,000. Then there was price decline of 35. That's when the accountant took 11,000, deducted provision of 35, and he got 75. So now let's get the temporary difference. Carrying amount minus the tax base and you find 35, which is a negative. That's what you call a deductible temporary difference. Number three, intangible assets. So we go to intangible assets. So go to the trial balance. How much is the intangible assets? How much is the intangible asset? Intangible assets is part of an current assets. And we have an amount of 4,000. So now let's read that question again. Number three, intangible assets comprise development cost, which is tax deductible when the amount is paid out. The cost of intangible asset was paid in the year 2014 and is presented net of amortized cost. So how much is our tax base? Our tax base is zero. That means the temporary difference will be 4,000. Why is it zero? Now, let me take you back to the definition. We said what is tax base? We said that tax base is the amount allowable for tax in the future. Let's go back to note number three. Intangible asset comprise development cost, which is tax deductible when amount is paid out. When the amount is paid out. The cost of intangible asset were paid in the year 2014. So, and in this period, we are in 2017. It was paid way back in 2014. So, in this case, we want to get the tax base. Can we be able to get the tax base? It's zero. Why? Because we say that tax base is the amount allowable for tax in the future. But we are told this one will be allowable when the amount is paid out. And we are told that it was already paid in 2014 in full. So nothing will be allowed in the future because it was already, already allowed when paid out way back in 2014. So that means our tax base will be zero. We get 4,000. I want you to note this. Eh? I, I don't want to cram this. Just note this. The tax base for the intangible asset is always equal to zero. I repeat again that the tax base for intangible assets, it's always equal to zero. Good. Let's go to note number, note number four now. Note number four. Number four, you are told that goodwill and employee benefits are tax exempt. So if they are tax exempt, do not consider them there. Mm -hmm. Number five. Trade and other payable. So let's go to the trade balance and give me the trade payables. How much was the trade and other payable? Trade payable is part of the current liabilities. So, and for the current liability, trade and other payable is an amount of 8,000. And remember, we say that since all the liability should be shown as a negative. Eh? Now, let's go back to note number five. Trade and other payable include provision for leave allowance of 1.4. Include provision. For those who are doing advanced taxation, eh? remember, all provision are desirable expenses. And we are told that. Trade and other payable include, if we are told it's include, you deduct it to get the tax base. Eh? Include a provision for river allowance of 1.4, which is tax deductible on cash basis. So if this one include, to get the tax base, you just deduct it. Eh? So how much will you get in that case? So in that case, we'll have it 66. Eh? And then it should be in bracket. Remember all the liability show them in as a negative. Eh? So now you take negative 8,000 minus, minus 6,600. In that case, you have an amount of 14, which is negative like that. Number six, trade receivables. So we go to trade receivables. So let's go to the trade balance to get the tax base. Not the tax base, but the carrying amount tax base. Now, the current amount, you just go to the trail balance, placement of financial position. And the amount of trade receivable is an amount of 66.50. 66.50. We go back to note number six. Number six, we are told that trade receivable are stated net. It's stated net. This is net. If we are told that it's net, that means there is something has been deducted. Eh? 
So, trade receivable are stated net of general allowance for bad debt at the rate of 5%. General allowance for bad debt, remember it's a desirable expense. They are only allowable when they are specific. Eh? So, trade receivable are stated net of general allowance for bad debt at the rate of 5% of the gross receivable. The general allowance are not tax deductible until they become specific. So, if this one, we are told that this is the 650. It's net of general allowance. So if it's net, that means they have deducted something. You add it back. Eh? You add that provision. And we are told that yeah, 5% of the gross receivable. So how do you get this? 5%. Eh? Now, don't do what you are thinking. Eh? Because I think you want to do 66.50 times 5%. And then you add it back there. No. We are told that it's 5%. Let me read that last statement. Eh? Uh -huh. Allowance for bad debt at debt of 5% of the gross receivable. It's 5% of the gross. This is not gross, this is net. Eh? So this is what you mean. 66.50 is the same as 95%. Or about 100%. Because it's 5% of the gross, not 5% of the net. So 66.50 is the same as 95%. What about 100%? And you'll find it's 7,000. It's 5,000. So, you get there, we have a difference of 350. Which is like that. Mm -hmm. Let's go to note number 7. Number 7, you are told that. The building, which is included in the PPE, so it's part of this, eh? Building is part of PPE. And you are told that the building which is included in the PPE was revalued during the year. The increase in value of 3 million does not affect the tax base. The increase in value of 3 million does not affect the tax base. Eh? So, in this temporary difference, eh, we have a 3 million there, which arises as a result of revaluations. Remember, let me take you back. We say that revaluation changes for PPE, that's PPE, and available for sale are subjected to a special deferred tax treatment. PPE and available for sale. The tangible and current assets. So that is it. And then number eight, the tax base of the other item were equal to the occurring amount. If the tax base and the current amount they are equal, that means there is no temporary differences. Number nine, the tax rate applicable is 30%. Required number one, deferred tax balance as of 30th April 2017. So now let's get the de uh, deferred tax balance. So you just add the total temporary differences. So you add the total 11,200, you add 17, 1,000, you minus 2, you minus that 5, you add 4, you minus 14, you minus 350. In total, you'll get 10,650. So if you want now to determine the deferred tax, deferred tax, you just take 30% of this taxable temporary difference, 10,650. So that means our deferred tax will be presented in the statement of financial position be an amount of 31. 95. As simple as that. Eh? That's how we determine the deferred tax at the end. So, if you are now part two of the question, you are supposed to show deferred income tax account. How do we show deferred tax uh, account? Now, let's be here. Deferred, that's number two. Eh? Deferred tax account. Now, this is how we present it. Remember, this is a liability. Eh? And for the liability, the balance drawdown will be on the credit side. Balance brought down and the balance carried down. And you already have the balance carried down. This is what you have gotten here. The 30% of 10650 is that 195. That 195. Then how much was the balance brought down? To get the balance brought down, you just go back to the statement of financial position. Let's go there to the statement of financial position. What do we have there? And a statement of financial position and an uncurrent liabilities. Deferred income tax as at 1st May 2016 was 1200. Was 1200. Then we said this. Revaluation changes. Revaluation changes for PP and available for sale are subjected to defer, special deferred tax treatment. So in case we have a revaluation gain, revaluation gain, you credit. But a revaluation loss, devaluation loss, you debit. And in this case, you're only considering two factors. Non-current tax, that's PPE, 
and are available for sale. Now let's go back here. Let's go back there. PP, we are told that that was courtesy of note number. It was courtesy of note number what? Note number seven. There was a revolution of building of 3,000, which did not affect the tax base. So of the temporary difference, amount of 3,000 arises from the revolution of asset. So we just come here. In this case, under revolution gain, we had a gain. So PP, there was a revolution gain of 3,000 times 30%. And in that case, you'll have 900, since it was a positive. Then, let's go back now to available for sale. We are looking at PP and available for sale. Available for sale, we have a negative of 2,000. So that means there was a revaluation loss. So this one is a deductible. If it's a deductible, this is what you do to the account. In the account, it was a revaluation loss. Available for sale, there was a loss of 2,000, that's what you call deductible. You multiply by the tax rate, which is 30%, and you have 600. Now from there, we can balance, so that we can determine how much we take the income statement. So this side is more. This is 37.85, 37.95. So here we have the balancing figure on the credit side. That's what we take to the income statement. And how much do you take to the income statement? It's an amount of... 1695. 1695. And you need to ask yourself, you are taking it to the income statement. Is it an income? Is it an expense? So how do we argue that? Remember, we say that increase in deferred tax is an expense. A decrease in deferred tax is an income. So this is it an income? Is it an expense? Now, this is how you argue. Balance brought down was 1200. That was the balance brought down. Then you added 900 because there was a revolution gain. So that totaled to 2100. Totaled to 2100. But at the end, balance carried down. It's more than 3795. Balance brought down is 2100. At the end, it's 3795. So there was an increase. And we see that an increase in deferred tax becomes an expense. So this one you will present it as an expense because there was an increase in deferred tax. You take the balance brought down, which was 12. There was a gain of 900. You add, you get 21. And then you compare that one against the debit side. Eh? So it's on that side, it's an expense. It's on the other side, it becomes an income. And now this question, this question was repeated exactly the way it is. In November 2019, in November 2019, question number 5B. November 2019, question 5B, it was the same. So, we'll go and try that. Eh? Good. So, with that, we can still try another illustration. I want us to try on another illustration. November 2019. November 2019, question 5B. Let's do that question. Open that question, November 2019, question 5B. So, and when getting the temporary uh, deferred tax, first of all, you need to start with items, the carrying amount, tax base, and the temporary difference. Those are the key elements you need to compute. So, let me read the question. I read the question, and then I will do uh, reading point by point, and then adjusting. Yeah? So, we are told that Mafuta Limited had a deferred tax liability of one, uh, as at 1st October 2018 of shillings 400 million. For the purpose of preparing financial statement for the year ended 30th September 2019, the following additional information is available. Number one, I want us to adjust each. Eh? The company has available for sale financial asset. The company has available for sale financial asset with a carrying amount of 80 million. With a carrying amount of 80 million and financial asset at fair value. So, financial asset at fair value through profit and loss of 40 million. Yeah, those are the major two categories of uh, financial asset. Eh? We have available for sale and we have financial asset at fair value. The difference between the two is that available for sale is a long term investment. Financial asset at fair value, they are short term investment. That's the difference. Eh? So, and those were the carrying amount. Mm hmm. Both financial assets had reported losses in fair value of 8 million each as at 30th September 2019. 
So let me repeat again. Both financial assets had reported losses. If they had reported losses, remember these are the carrying amount. That means accountant has already adjusted. And they had already lost or reported a loss of 2 million. So to the tax base, we say that the revenue authority of the tax money, we need to determine the, or the actual cost, the original cost. How do we get that? Let me read it again. Both financial assets had reported losses. If this had reported a loss, that means the original cost was 82. And this means it was 42. And then as an accountant, it was 82. And then there was a revaluation loss of 2, you minus 2. That means your carrying amount will be 80. That's how we get the tax base. Eh? The tax base you added to the original cost. So now let's get the temporary difference. At the temporary difference, 80 minus 82, you get 2, which is a deductible. It was a revaluation loss. Also here, it's a deductible like that. But remember, for this for available for sale, NPP will be subjected to a special deferred tax treatment. Good. Let's go to number 2. Number 2. Inventory. So, inventory. So, inventory is shown at the lower of cost at net realizable value. Actually, that's how we value inventory. Inventory to the financial statement, you show it based on the lower of either cost or net realizable value. Then you are told that the cost is that 200 million, while the net realizable value is that 120. The cost is that too, and the net realizable value is that 120. You ask yourself, how much is your carrying amount? And we have said that the carrying amount is the ROA of the two. And the ROA is that 120. But we say that to the tax base. The taxman need to know the original cost. And we are told that had original cost of that two. The original cost is that two. That's what we are told. Let me read that statement again. That inventory is shown at the ROA of the cost at net realizable value. The cost is that 200. That was the cost. And this is the net realizable value. So, to the current amount is an account to the financial statement, you show them the row of the two, which is that 120. But to the tax base of the revenue authority, you show it at the original cost. So, give me the difference. The difference there we have, we have a difference of how much? We have a difference of 80. Yeah, which is a negative like that. Mm -hmm. Let's go to note number three. Number three, they are talking about receivables. Number three, we are told that receivable had a carrying amount of 2,000, had a carrying amount of 2,000, mm -hmm. like that, after making an allowance for a doubtful debts of 8 million and exchange gain of 160 million and realized. Both allowance and exchange gain are not allowable for tax purposes. So how much is the tax base? So this is a receivable. And the carrying amount is 2,000. In this case, they had made an allowance for doubtful debts. Yeah. There was allowance for doubtful debts. Doubtful debt of 80. They had already made a provision for doubtful debts of 80. And also there was exchange gain. Exchange gain of 40, sorry, of 160. But you're told it's unrealized. It's unrealized. For those doing uh, taxation, we say that provision for doubtful debts is a desirable expenses. And then unrealized income, for example, the exchange gain which was unrealized, eh? unrealized income are not taxable. So if you want to determine our tax base, eh? if this is the amount was 2,000, assuming that's the carrying amount, they had already deducted provision for doubtful debts of 80. You add back the 80. And also they had already included exchange gain. But this exchange gain was unrealized. Remember exchange gain is an income you're supposed to receive. Eh? But in this case it's unrealized. So it's non-taxable. You minus 160. I repeat again. I take the amount. I add back the bad debt. I deduct the exchange gain which is unrealized. In short, I'm adding back the expense. Deducting the income. So with that I'll be able to get my tax base. And the tax base on the receivable will be an amount of 1920. So yeah, I'll be having 80, which is a positive. Mm -hmm. Let's go to note number four. Number four, it's all about trade and other payable. So 
trade payable trade payable now trade payable are stated at that 600 are stated at that 600 but remember you say that all their ability show them as a negative trade payable are stated at that 600 million after making provision for discount of 40 million after making so after making that means they had already this is payable you're supposed to pay they already made a provision for discount of 40 so that means how much will be the tax base after making provision if they have made a provision what do you do you add back so, so it will be that 640 after making a provision for discount so you add it back if they have made a provision I remember since they are ability to show them as a negative eh? So that one and that one, you get a positive 40, like that. Number five, property plant and equipment, that's PPE, PPE, has a carrying amount of 48, has a carrying amount of 4,800 million and tax base of 4,000, and tax base of 4,000. So what's the difference? 48, that's the carrying amount, and the tax base is 4,000. That means the difference is 800. Mm -hmm. We continue. PPE had a carrying amount of 48 and a tax base of 4,000. Some land and building were divided upward by 200 million during the year ended that is September 2019. So of this temporary difference, we are told that some land and building were divided upward by 200. Of this 800, we have a 200. Which, are, uh, which give rise, uh, which arises as a result of revaluation. So we know we have to take this 200. Eh? Remember, I say that revaluation changes from available for sale and PPE will be subjected to special deferred tax treatment. Number six, number six, it's all about intangible assets. Intangible assets. And we are told that intangible assets consist of trade license being amortized over five years had a carrying amount of 240. Had a carrying amount of 240. How much is the tax base? For those who understood what I did last in last question, how much is the tax base? <laughs> we said that. Tax base for intangible assets is always equal to zero. So 240 minus zero, you get 240. Okay, why is it zero? So let's read that. Let's read that again. Number six. Intangible asset consists of trade license being amortized over five years had a carrying amount of 240 million this was allowed for tax purposes in full two years ago this was allowed for tax in full two years ago now let's go to the tax base i want to repeat what we said tax base is the amount allowable for tax in the future but we are told this this 240 was allowed for tax two years ago in full if it was allowed two years in ago in uh, two years ago in full nothing will be allowed for tax purposes in the future because we said the tax base is the amount allowable for tax in the future. That's why it's a zero. Number seven. Assume the tax rate is 30%. Required, number one. Relevant temporary differences. Eight marks. So that is it. Eh? The relevant temporary differences. And then you can add the total. Let's add the total. And the total temporary difference will have it's an amount of 10.64. So if you want to determine the deferred tax, Deferred tax, we just take 30% of this 1064. And with that, how much do you get? You have uh, 319.2. Right, 319.2. 319.2, as simple as that. Eh? And then part two of the question, journal entries to record the deferred tax liability. The journal entry, what do you debit, what do you credit? So, before determining what to debit and what to credit, eh, I need to show you how to prepare deferred tax account. So, let me show you how to open deferred tax account. We say that this one is a liability, deferred tax is a liability. Eh? So, you start with balance brought down on the, on the credit side and then balance carry down. And we already have our balance carry down. Our balance carry down is what you have gotten here. 319. Point two. Balance brought down, we are given there from the question, eh? the first paragraph or the first statement. We are told that Mafuta Limited has a deferred tax liability as at that first of, as at first October 2018 of 400 million. 
the opening balance was 400 billion. And then we say that on the credit side, you bring revaluation gain. Revaluation gain. But on the credit side, uh, on the debit side, you bring revaluation losses. Revaluation loss. But in this case, you're only considering only two items PP and available for sale. So revaluation gain, you look at either for PP or that, the PP or available for sale, the same thing as a revaluation loss. So remember, we are told that of the PP here, there was a revaluation gain of 200. 200. So PP, there was a revaluation gain of 200 times 30 percent. So what do you get there? 30 percent of that you have, uh, it's how much? Three times two, eh? So that's 60, right? Uh -huh. Then let's go back here to the financial asset at fair, uh, to the available for sale. Available for sale, there was a temporary difference. There was temporary difference of two. You see, it's on uh, it's credit. Eh? That means on that side it was a revaluation loss. You bring it to the other side. So revaluation loss on available for sale is two times uh, two times thirty percent. And you have it zero point six. Then from there you cross. So this side is more. Eh? So that's for sixty. That's for sixty. For sixty. For sixty. Good. So how much do you take to the income statement as the balancing figure? You take 460 minus 319.2 and 0 0.6. Sorry. Let's be here. Let's be there. So what do you have there? How much was the temporary difference there? So I want to... Uh, to uh, Let's go back to note number note number what? Note number one. Note number one, we are told that. Let me repeat number one. I realized I made a mistake. The company has available for sale financial asset with a current amount of 80 and a financial asset at fair value through profit and loss of 40. That's what we have. 80 and 40. Then we are told that both financial asset had reported losses of fair value of 8 each. It was not 2. It was 8 each. Eh? So that means this was supposed to be 88 and this one should be 48. So here we have 8 and also here we have 8. Eh? 8, 8. But the good thing does not change the total. Eh? The total will mean the same. Nothing has changed. It's only that these two figures I indicated 2 instead of 8. So good. So now let's go back here. So available for sale, the loss was 8 times 30% and you have 2.4. 2.4 like that. So the balancing figure, what you take to the income statement, uh, will be an amount of 138.4. That's what you take to the income statement. And then the question is, will you take it as an income or as an expense? So in this case, it's a reduction. You see, we had the balance brought down was 400 plus 60, you get 460. At the end, it has reduced to 391. So that means there are a reduction by a one that eight, so that means you will take it as an income. You take it as an income. So now the question was: it was not you are supposed you are supposed to show the journal entries. This is how we show the journal entries. Journal entries. It's all about what do you debit, what do you credit. Let's be here. Let's be here. You see, this is a deferred tax account. Eh? You debit deferred tax account with one that eight point four. You credit income statement with 138.4. So the change is what you show the debit or the credit. So that means this is what I mean. Eh? I've debited deferred tax, deferred tax account with an amount of 138.4, and then I will credit income statement by an amount of 138.4. As simple as that. So I want you to go and try this question. June 2010, June 2010, sorry, June 2012, question 2C, June 2012, June 2012, question 2C, June 2012, question 2C.
look at that. That marks the end of our today's session, income taxes. Eh? And it's good for you to understand income taxes because this topic you also require when you'll be, uh, when you'll be uh, revising about published financial statement. So thank you for your time.